Are you ready? Okay. If you're here, you should be here. Like they say in open spaces, the people who come are the, the people who should have, be here, should, have, should have been here. And whatever is going to happen is the only thing that could have happened. It's very zen-like. Can you tell I'm on my sixth talk? This actually talk is very important to me because uh, it made me learn a lot of new things. It's part of that uh, challenge that you have uh, that I give myself to learn a new thing at least every couple of months. And Silverlight was one of those things where I didn't know a lot about. Um, but when the Microsoft uh, test framework came out uh, for Silverlight, I started looking into it and I tried to write uh, unit tests with it just to see what it's like. And from the unit test I tried to understand how Silverlight works and I came up with Silver Unit. Um, I'm assuming that people here are working or starting to work with Silverlight. Raise your hands if you are. Okay, that's good. Um, how many of you are uh, familiar with uh, the parts and states model of a Silverlight control? Okay, just a few. So I'll also go over that. There are some uh, important things to know about how Silverlight controls work if we want to learn how to test them. I'm especially going to talk about Silverlight controls because they're one of the hardest things to test inside Silverlight. The rest is relatively easy uh, with uh, today's tools already. Um, <coughs> um, my name is Roy Oshrov. I don't know if this is the same crowd that had come to the other talks, but uh, you can read my blog at icrealizable.com. Uh, I have an upcoming course on test-driven development uh, with .NET. It's a five-day course in August 24th. You can read the, the details in this URL. I work at a company called TypeMock, and one of the solutions I'm going to show you for unit testing in Silverlight is based on one of the tools that TypeMock develops. Also have a book that just came out. It's, uh, I would have signed it, but it's gone. They, they sold it all. But uh, I'd welcome, uh, I'd love it if, uh, if you actually uh, read it and sent me email about how much you loved it. If you didn't love it, don't send me anything. Um, I'm going to introduce a very simple control that I built in Silverlight. And then I'm going to uh, explain how it works and how I test the various parts of it. And what it means uh, to test the logic of the control, control versus the UI of the control. I'm going to show the Microsoft Silverlight test framework. So I call it MSL test. They call it the Microsoft, uh, the Silverlight unit test framework, but it's not a unit test framework, and I'll explain why. I'll also show, I'll, I'll also show that's nice. I, I will uh, show Silver Unit, which is a framework that I developed, which allows really unit testing on Silverlight related stuff. And I will show a few other frameworks. Um, at, least, at least mention them uh, so that you know that there are other tools out there. And if we have time, we'll do a short song. Now I'm assuming that you've seen a couple of unit tests in your life. Am I right? If you've seen a couple of unit tests before, raise your hand. Okay, you've all seen them. That's good. So I won't cover this and that this is a, a unit test in an unit, but I do want to show you the control that I built. Um, to show you the control, I'll show you the solution in Visual Studio. Where are you? This is the silver unit one. This is the one. There are several. This is a, a solution with several projects. I'm going to explain each one before I start showing stuff. Um, there is the control runner, which is just a page that shows uh, custom control. There is the controls library, which contains my custom control. There is the Microsoft Silverlight test demos. And there is the silver unit related unit tests. All this code will be downloadable from my blog at the end of the day or tomorrow as soon as I wake up, I promise. Um, um, let's just run the control first to understand what it is that I'm trying to test. These are two instances of my control. The first uh, behavior that you can see is that when I put the mouse over it, it changes color. Um, when I hover uh, away, it changes color again. 
when I, uh, when I click without leaving, the text changes and the color changes. And when I leave the mouse, the text changes again. When I put focus on the text box, the text box changes, but the focus always, only the focused text boxes have a yellow background. So this is just a very simple control with a lot of UI related behavior. Um, has anyone ever built a control around something like this or ever tried to build something like this by raise of hand? Okay. Um, I'll show it basically how it's done and I'll explain about the uh, the um, the uh, the states model and various other things. First of all, what does the control look like? To build the custom control, there were two things that I needed to do. First of all, let me just scroll down here. Okay. Uh, this is the control library. What we should care about is the fact that in the XAML here, in the generic.xaml, there is all the UI related logic um, that, ter that means uh, how to paint things and in the custom control.cs is all the code related logic but they are connected together in fact one of the things that we'll see is that when you build silverlight controls the um, the code that you write in uh, C sharp or VB uh, has an interface or a contract against the XAML that uh, it should talk to and that's exactly what uh, our control is is doing it talks using some sort of a contract um, this is our custom control inherits from control and it defines several uh, attributes those attributes are there are two types of attributes the first is called template part here and the second type of attribute is template visual state now the template parts represent parts of in the template in the XAML that we will need or want to interact with for example the core is just the name that I gave to the rectangle that's inside my control and I'll react to various events inside it so because XAML loads all the controls internally I want to be able to access those controls by name so I declare them as, as special parts of the template that I want access to and by what name and what type they should be for example the text box I just give it a name text and it should be a type of text box in Silverlight and the way I use it is very simply uh, in the custom con control there is an on apply template uh, method in the on apply template um, I am calling get template child layout root is something that I'll explain later the core is me getting the uh, framework element which is the rectangle getting uh, by calling get template child which is an inherited method I set it into a property here and then later I can just register to events like mouse hover mouse over mouse click and actually do some logic based on those events the same I uh, do with the, the text box I get the template child with this name just like I declared in the attribute and that means that in the XAML somewhere there has to be something that's named text and then later I can change the text inside the text box and stuff like that um, let's see what this looks like in the uh, on apply template I also register to all the events of those children that I got from the template if I go to this method this is what it looks like uh, txt got focus I want you to handle it on this method on core mouse enter mouse leave left button down uh, left button up I want you to do various other logic now what is the logic that I'm doing on each one of those calls the logic for example when the text loses focus I'm doing something with uh, with an object called visual state manager anyone here ever used visual state manager okay one person visual state manager uh, is an interesting beast uh, a visual state is a logical entity that we can uh, 
uh, that we can uh, take control of. Let me explain that first of all with a couple of slides. Uh, there are several things that I would like to test. For example, when the mouse is hovered, uh, I want to check that the text box is cleared and that the visuals are changed, right? Because it changes into red and to yellow and to all that stuff. So this is one of the things that I would like to write a unit test for. I would also like to test that the text box text changes when I release the left mouse and all those other things. I also would like to check various uh, property uh, related callbacks. What is the property related callback? Properties, uh, if you've done uh, Silverlight, you know that there's such a thing called dependency property. And dependency properties are different from regular properties in that they're not really properties. They only uh, get value and set value from the Silverlight runtime. They save those values. Uh, instead, we declare various things as static. For example, a property with the name and metadata of a default value. And we also can give each property uh, a callback handler. And that callback handler, such as this one, will be uh, executed every time someone changes the value of that property, either from XAML, from other places. This is, handler is important because it contains the logic that decides how properties behave. For example, if you give a property an invalid value, you want to be able to reset the value. Obviously, I would want to write a unit test for that that says, if I give you an invalid value, are you being reset into the default value? Here, for example, I get the control, and I check if the new value is bigger than 50, which is for me means invalid or it's smaller than one, I want you to set the value again into the default one, which is 50. That means that you should never get an exception unless you really want to throw it. So if I change the value to 51, I should still be 50 because of this logic. So I would like to test this as well. Um, so the control has parts. That's the inner control. So think of it like a skeleton. In our control, our skeleton has multiple parts as well. These are the template parts. We have core and we have text, and they have types. But there has to be a corresponding set of types in the XAML. So in XAML, I would have also the control template. Take a look at this. This is the control template, and in there, there is a rectangle. And the X name of the rectangle is called core. And this is the one that I'm also uh, putting on the attributes on the control. It's the same name. There's also a text box with an X name called text. So these are the corresponding actual implementations of that something which could be, which is a framework element and a text box. Now, because uh, the XAML is being edited, could be edited by a different person, me as the person who writes the code, I just say, look, I need this, th that thing which you call text and it has to at least inherit from text box. And I want that thing which is called core, it that has to at least inherit from framework element. But I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what it does, I just care that I can react to its events or I can set text on it or stuff like that. So th those are the two corresponding parts. Every part in the code has a corresponding part in the XAML. So that was the parts. Now there are visual states. And you can think of state as a skin. For example, our, our control can have multiple states, such as disabled. So it looks different when it's disabled. It has enabled, it has uh, mouse down, it has various states. So if we had the skeleton again, the skins of the skeleton are the visual states of the control. So we have a visual state of a runway model on the skeleton. This is one visual state. It may also have a state of heroin chick. Okay? Same parts underneath. All those things. But I don't care what the, about the visuals as long as the parts underneath are the same. How it looks is the decision of XAML. Now, um, let's start from the control part. So in the control part, I decide that logically my control can be normal or mouse over or pressed. And each one of them he probably looks different. So I will decide with maybe my designer or maybe with myself that I can move to these visual states, but I don't care what they look like. 
I just move them and XAML will take care of the rest. So this is me declaring that there is a template visual state with this name and it's part of some group called common states. The reason that you want groups is because some states can only, there can only be one true state in a specific group. So it can either be enabled or disabled in the group of enablement. But it can be enabled and pressed at the same time, two visual states. So they have to be in two different groups. Okay, so there is mouse related uh, visual states and there is enabled related visual states. So they can correspond in the same time, but only one in each group can be enabled. Because my control can be in visual states, can be enabled and pressed at the same time. So I declare this, and this is my contract. I don't care how XAML implements it. I just want to know that there is something of that name in the XAML. And later, when I ask the visual state manager to change to a visual state called mouse over, the XAML will take care of everything else. So this is what it might look like in the XAML. In XAML, there are uh, visual state groups. Let me just zoom out and then zoom in these are the visual state groups by default you can make them uh, bigger if you wanted to it's just an, a simple example these are de declared you can see right below the uh, the actual parts now there are the visual state groups and in each group there are the visual states this is the group of common states this is normal mouse over pressed and so on now the nice thing about it is that once you declare a visual state in XAML you can declare that each visual state has a different look and feel. So in this case the visual state called mouse over will actually initiate a storyboard and in the storyboard there is a color animation where you change notice the target name of core that's our rectangle um, during 10 microseconds to the color blue and the property being changed is uh, the rectangle dot color so that means that when I uh, will ask my visual state manager which is really the bridge between our control and the XAML uh, to change into a state of mouse over it will take care of everything that means changing the visual state and changing the colors and all that stuff but from the control point of view there should be no need to know that there is an animation there and all that stuff and that provides really nice and clean separation between the model of the control and the model of the view of the control and if you can keep clean with that model it should be very easy to test it because then my test would be not that uh, the, the rectangle is now red, because that's just a, a UI decision. My test will be that I actually called the visual state manager. And from that, that moment on, I don't care what happens. So if I, my control called the visual state manager when I clicked it with the correct parameters, then that means that the unit test should pass. So that could be something for us. In, remember these are our parts um, we have parts core and text and you can see that core is the rectangle text is the text box and we have three states normal mouse over and pressed and each one of them currently looks like this so I want uh, to test that when I for example click the visual state is changed that is just a call to the visual state manager and that when I click or mouse over or stuff like that the text in text box uh, control which is an internal control uh, will change as well and I ch want to check invalid values of properties here's what an event that triggers the visual state might look like uh, a test that triggers a visual state our test will simulate mouse over on our custom control our custom control should then invoke go to visual state on the visual state manager so what I'm going to test is actually just that call. In terms of unit testing, I would test the interaction between custom control and the visual state manager. That is what I intend to do. If I want to test the control text, remember the text box is located inside our custom control. So I will simulate, for example, mouse down. 
and then I will check the text inside the text box. So my assert will be against the text box and check the text inside it. If I want to check a property, I would actually just instantiate the control, set the value of the property, and then check the value after, or check that I get back an exception, something like that. So this is my assert. Um, now we're going to see those scenarios with the, the Microsoft uh, Silverlight test framework with SilverUnit, and then I'm going to show a couple of other frameworks. Uh, with the Microsoft uh, Silverlight test, uh, what what the Silverlight uh, test framework for Microsoft is, is really just a set of DLLs, and running them is j like running a Silverlight project. You add a reference to a couple of DLLs, inclu including the test framework, and you write test classes with various attributes on them. I'll show that in a second. I just want to to show you how it runs. There is no command line runner. If I just run the test project with all my tests, it runs in the browser like this. So you can see it's a full integration test. It runs inside the browser. It changes all the properties. You can actually see it, the UI in, with your own eyes. You can even delay stuff so you can check it visually. You can see all the tests written on the right with, all the, uh, with, with the names of the tests. Let's see what the tests look like. We'll start with the simplest ones. Uh, the nice thing that they did is that if you've ever written uh, a test with the Microsoft Test Framework, they implemented the same named attributes, but this is a different framework. You just think it's the same. There is a test class which you put on your class, and you have to inherit from something. Now, there are two possibilities. You either inherit from something called work item test, or you inherit from presentation test. Work item test is for things that are not visual. The only things that you can check that are not visual are related to property related stuff, and even that's not true sometimes. But it would, it's nice that you have a different choice, because now I can, when, if I do test reviews to my developers and they write unit tests for Silverlight, I want to make sure that they only have work item test related logic. And then they don't have access to extra properties related to the browser UI. For example, the test panel. They can't add the control to the UI and all that stuff. So everything does happen. It does happen inside the browser, but there is no UI for it. So it's kind of like in memory, but it's not really, because you still need to run the browser to run it. The, uh, this is what a, text, a, test, a simple test looks like. You would think this is pretty simple. Yes. So uh, are you saying that the bottle could like spill on the computer? Uh, but that is not my computer. <laughs> <laughs> huh, integration test, that's an uh, interesting thought. Thank you very much for worrying about me. Um, so here we have the custom control. And I'm actually just setting, look at the name of the test max text length invalid value resets to default value this is the name now the test looks like this I create an instance of the custom control I set come on I set the max text length to 10 just to make sure that it sets the values then I set it to 51 which is an invalid value and I assert that it remains 50 because this is the logic in the uh, callback of the dependency property if we look at the dependency property here, the code for it here is non-existent, but this is the code that we're actually checking. Now if I wanted to, I could just put a breakpoint here and run those tests again. But this time, not control F5, just F5. So those tests run in the browser, but I can debug and step into. You see now I'm stepping into the code of my control, and I can check all this kind of stuff. I'll get into it once more, because in here, I'm actually changing the property once again. So I'm recursively going into my function. And that's basically it. Um, now you have to uh, stop the browser, the uh, process manually. 
the browser and you can just close it if you want to stop the tests from running. So that's one form of testing. That's the simplest form of testing you could do with the Silverlight test framework. Let's talk about something um, a bit more uh, uh, annoying. And before we get into UI related, I want to sh show you uh, the, the, the idea that you can do asynchronous tests inside the Microsoft test for Silverlight. Um, asynchronous means that you are putting this special attribute on the test. And that means that everything in the test happens is actually put on a queue and executed in a different thread. And the reason you want to do this is that whenever you load the UI into the browser, it happens in an async manner in a different process. So if you have stuff that relates to UI, you're going to do it asynchronously. Now you don't have to do uh, property related stuff with async, but I just want to show you a test that you've already seen with the new syntax. So that when we see UI related stuff, it doesn't look just as scary. Okay, so here we are creating custom control. Because this is UI related, I have to register to an event called loaded on the control. Loaded only happens when the browser is finished loading the control and all the templates. In fact, I should ha I, I need to wait. Um, I in queue callback. This is something I inherit from my base class. Notice that my, my base class is called presentation test. So I inherit a lot of in queue related stuff. The first one is called in queue callback. That takes a delegate, in this case it's a lambda. And in the Lambda, I do this. Add to the uh, test panel, which are part of my uh, class, uh, my control. So create a, an instance. But don't do it right now. I want you to queue it and do it on a different thread. Now, in queue conditional for loaded, this is an interesting one. This is me basically telling the, fr for the framework to wait until loaded is true. OK? So I'm registering to the control loaded, and now I'm waiting until it's loaded. Only then can I start testing. If I start tes testing before that, the XAML might not have loaded properly. Various timing stuff could happen. It's really, really annoying. Uh, everything I do from now on has to be inside in queue. Otherwise, it's going to happen right away in my own thread. Okay? Things will not just stop. It's not like I go here, and then this line is actually stopped until load is true. All the lines happen automatically. They run like this. And now there's a queue on the browser. This test is already finished. There's a queue on the browser, just waits. Now because I put asynchronous here, the, brow uh, the test doesn't actually finish. It just says, oh, this is async. I'm going to wait until there is actually uh, uh, something that tells me that there is nothing else to do. And then I will finish my test because it's all happening in a queue. I don't want the test to actually end for real. So everything I do is in queued for later. So I wait for loaded. I set the control text to null, for example, and I assert that the default is still empty string. But all that is happening asynchronously. And I have to write in queue test complete. If I forget to do that, my test will be stuck forever. So this is what asynchronous tests look like. Now the big question is, do I have to deal with this monstrosity all the time when I do UI testing in Silverlight Test? And the answer is 90% of the time, yes. This is the API you will have to deal with, and I think it's, well, it works, but I think for readability, it's horrible. I think it's hard to understand the test. You have to really space them out to actually read the code. It's really hard to get the tests working. It took me uh, two days to write the test that you see here. And you know they had bugs and all that kind of stuff. It took me a lot of time to realize this. One of the main reasons, the documentation on how to use the framework is scarce. And I wish there was more. I wish there were videos and stuff like that. Because I came across issues which are really small, really simple, but you just had to ask the right people. OK, let's look at tests that really have to do with the UI. For example, I want to see the test where the text box text is changing. So I created my custom control. And because this is a UI test, I have to wait for the XAML to load. So everything has to be asynchronous. So I put async here. 
look at the name. When core mouse left button up, text changes to click. This is the text that should happen. So I create my custom control. I enqueue adding the control to the test panel. And I enqueue conditional ready for UI test. This is just a property that I added on the control specifically for testing because it was much, much simpler to use. And this is just a property that listens to the event for loaded and stuff like that. Now, the question is, how do you simulate that the mouse uh, was clicked on a specific control? Well, you can't. So what I had to do, I had to refactor the methods that react to the mouse clicks into public methods and then invoke them directly. Now those public methods take two arguments because they react to mouse arguments. They take the target that sent the click and they take a mouse event args. So I'm invoking this method but mouse event args cannot be created directly. It's, it has an internal constructor. So you can't even simulate mouse event args correctly. You can only send nulls. So if you wanted to check in your tests that only for specific coordinates it reacts in a specific manner, I, don't, I didn't find a way to do this. Um, this is what it looks like. Object sender, mouse button event args E. And, and it says visual state manager, go to state on this control, mouse over. True is just, do I use the transitions or not? And this is who calls it. Let me see. And you can see that when the core mouse left button up, it just registers this function, which I've specifically made public so that I can test it. I can simulate the click from my test framework. Let's see. Um, so what else did we have here? Um, was we just no, this is the visual state. Let me go back to the text box. Okay, so uh, we ready for UI test. I simulate the, the left click and I assert that the control.textbox.text is equal to click. So I also had to make the text box public so I can access it from inside the control from outside the control. And I have to say in queue test complete. It took me two hours to come up with this test. I mean it was simple to write and then it, two hours to debug and find out why it didn't work. And then I realized I wrote some code that was not inside in queue, right inside the test. And that code just ran and I didn't understand what was happening. And then I forgot to write in queue test complete. So it's very, very error prone. It's like riding a broken bicycle on a field of broken glass, really. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, it is a powerful framework, but it feels like it's a hack so that we can test this. Um, it's a very powerful one, and I think it's good enough for integration testing, but it's really hard to write tests against, and that's the problem. Because if it's hard to write tests against, no one will write tests against it. Um, here's when mouse left button down, text changes to click instead of click. And this is the same. On mouse left button down from the control.core, which is the rectangle, assert the text box text is click, and so on and so on. So all these tests look kind of the same. So that's how you test it asynchronously. Let's see what it looks like um, to, um, to move to visual states. Moving to visual state means that I want to test, if you remember, that it called the visual state manager correctly. Now, they specifically put inside the Silverlight API a way for us to replace the visual state manager. Let me show you this slides for a second. Remember that this is the test that I want to run now. Test, simulate mouse over, I want you to see if you are calling the visual state manager. Now instead of really calling visual state manager I want to create my own fake visual state manager. A stub or a mock object in this case. So Silverlight has a special API that allows you to set a custom visual state manager. I think they did it only for testing. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that great. But it's workable in a way. Let's see. I create my uh, 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 stub visual state manager. 
although in this case I would should just call it fake or a mock object, I'm not sure yet. It was also confusing when I wrote it. And when you inherit from Visual State Manager, which you can do, you can override the go to state core, which is a function that the Visual State Manager calls when someone says go to state. Now all I do here is I just add the information that was sent to me and I put it in a public field so I can assert against it. So I replace the Visual State Manager and then I assert on that fake Visual State Manager that someone actually called it with the correct parameters. Let's see that in action. Um, I create a new stuff Visual State Manager. I create an expected state, which is a Visual State request. This is my own class that I created just so I can encapsulate the information being sent as parameters. The information is the name of the state, the control, and whether transition true or false. So I just put it in one class so I can assert against it. I could have just put three fields and assert against each one separately. Um, I'm waiting for the, contr for the control to being laid, laid out or loaded. One of those events should do it. And then again, in queue callback, add to control, wait until uh, the control has been loaded. Visual State Manager, set custom Visual State Manager. This is built into Silverlight. This is Silverlight 2.0, by the way. Silverlight 3.0 has more things, but these tests work with Silverlight 3 just as well. Um, now, this is where that thing that I said, layout root, comes in. There is a hidden dark hole with set custom Visual State Manager. Set custom Visual State Manager takes in some kind of control. You can't just pass in the control under test. You can't pass in one of the inner controls. You have to pass in the place where the inner controls are lying in. What is that place? If we look at the XAML, what we need to pass in um, is this. So there's a grid. I put, I gave it an X name called layout root. The, the, the custom uh, visual state manager will operate on this control. So I have to ask for that specifically in my control so that in my tests I can initialize a visual state manager on that layout root. So look at how many hoops I have to jump through just to get stuff into a testable state. So I created a special property on my control which is the layout root which is where all the inner controls are sitting. And I say the visual state manager will handle all the visual state ma management stuff for this. And I give it my own fake manager. Now I simulate the text being uh, having focus. So txt on got focus is just another method I refactored that handles the event of txt got, uh, uh, on focus. So and I simulate it by saying the text box through it and sending new routed event args. So the event args, the parameters being sent to the event, um, luckily I can actually create an instance of them but this is just pure luck because it's just been easily I can't even create instances of stuff now I'm checking that after calling this this is really the act part now comes the assert part the, the because I acted on got focus someone when I say got focus should have called visual state manager that means that the visual states in my stub manager my fake manager should have been added to someone should have saved some new information there so I'm taking the actual state and I'm asserting that what I got back was actually what I expected. What did I expect? It's this, a visual state request where focus, true, and control. To make it a bit more readable, I can do this. No, not this, this. Um, so now it's somehow readable but I don't know. Still I have to do in queue test complete. This is how I test that Visual State Manager was called. Now all this test stuff with all the in queue and all that other thing um, just has, uh, it can be refactored. Here's an example of how you can refactor that into helper methods. For example, I have a hel helper method that checks Visual State on a custom control with an expected Visual State request and an action that executed on the control. All the goo is happening here. So this is what my tests looks like after refactoring. Um, 
create a new visual state request, check the visual state with the control and the expected state, given that this action has happened. So now my test looks much clearer. When I do this, I'm expecting the expected state to look like this, and so on and so on. So this is how my tests look, much shorter. But it takes time to refactor your test to look like this. Um, it's much harder than it should be. Here's a refactoring of the other test that I showed. Um, when core mouse left button changes to a CI, let's see, where's the refactoring here? Okay, here's the refactoring. I created a check text box reaction, giving a custom control and an action delegate the expected text box text is true and what happens here is that given a control and the fact that I simulate mouse up the text box now contains this text so I create these custom small helper methods which contain all the asserts and the enqueues and all that stuff and somehow I make that manageable but I have to go through a lot of hoops to make that happen so you can see that it's possible to do this it's kind of time consuming. So that was the Microsoft Silverlight test framework and how you use it. Let's talk about um, the silver unit. Uh, but before that, I just want to talk about some, some of the problems that we've already seen. First of all, you have to do a lot of async tests and the API is very, very unusable as far as I'm concerned. You cannot recreate UI events very easily or at all. And um, the visual state related stuff is awkward to a point where it actually throws an exception when you have a visual state manager for a reason which I've still yet to figure out. So I had to wrap all the calls to visual state manager in a try catch. This only happens during the tests. In production code, it doesn't throw any exception. And once I figure it out, I'll let you know. But right now, this is, I think, a big problem. Because it's so re uh, required to, uh, to, to uh, have a lot of lambdas because you enqueue a lot of stuff, uh, VB.NET is left behind because in VB you don't have uh, a lambda type that does not return a, a value. So you can only create functions in line. You, can, you cannot use the in queue related methods in VB.NET. It doesn't have the, the types necessary. So it's not VB.NET friendly. And of course, you cannot run it from automated builds because you need to run it in a browser. So it's very, very complicated if runnable at all. So that's where Silver Unit comes in. Silver Unit um, is a framework that tries to uh, allow really unit testing of a control at that level. If I said earlier that we separated the model of the control from the view, then I really want to be able to separate them and just run tests in memory. You can write the test in any test framework. You just have a special attribute called Silverlight Unit Test that you put on your tests. Uh, it's based on the TypeMock uh, uh, OpenAOP API, which means uh, that you need to have a TypeMock license to run this. But the framework itself that's built on it is open source, so you can extend it. If you already have a TypeMock license, you can actually run this framework and you can extend it, all the source there. There are no async tests. It simulates the Silverlight API, but it runs just in memory. No browser needed. And it's very, very simple to use and learn. Um, it's actually written in VB.NET, just because I'm a VB guy by default. This is what Silver Unit looks like. Uh, first of all, let's run all the tests here. Uh, I recreated the same test. I'm going to run this using test driven. I could have run this using n unit or whatever. This runs in memory. This is the output window, which I just changed the look and feel of it, so you can read it uh, more easily. Now, when I run the tests, they all run just in memory. They do run kind of slow, but not as slow as inside the browser. You can run this in command line, uh, and you can see all the test names running there. Let's see what the tests look like. First of all, let's look at the property callback related tests. The, this is the uh, MSL test, sorry. <coughs> so, um, the way we can do this is by creating a custom control we put a, text, uh, a test with the Silverlight unit test attribute on it. We create a custom control. This happens just in memory. We set the various template child to it by just creating new text box, new rectangle, giving them names, and using the silver unit object by saying set template child on this control. 
So we are actually injecting the internal dependencies. We are actually replacing the work that XAML does. We don't need to wait for template to load. We're actually just loading whatever we want. Now, because we are loading whatever we want, we can load mock objects and stubs here that simulate our events because we have full control of what gets into our control. We have full control of our control. That's nice. We call on apply template manually. We can choose not to even call it. It's our choice because this is a runtime thing. The runtime always calls on apply template, but it's our choice when to call it, when we choose to initialize it. <coughs> we set the text of the control. We assert that the text is actually not null. It's equal to an empty text. I can just run this test. I can break test with debugger if I wanted to. All the menus, all the run tests are part of test driven, not part of silver unit whatsoever. So I can just debug this. There is no browser running. I can assert, I can debug into the control and so on. Um, this is the same custom control, but uh, I can create, for example, helper methods that create the control for me. So the, I can refactor this into easier tests. Let's look at the tests that were really hard to write uh, with MSL test. So moving to visual state tests. This is what it looks like. Um, create a custom control. Set the template children. Um, and what was it? And by default, I want you to assert that the visual state was changed to normal. So there was a uh, let me. There was a requirement that by default there is a normal visual state. Um, let's remove uh, this. Just make it more readable. Silver unit has a special assert class, so silver unit dot assert, and there is a special API for checking that the visual state was indeed called correctly. So I don't need to, to create anything. I don't need to replace anything. I can just check the last visual state that was requested. Even if it's not the last, I can always check it was requested correctly. So I send in all the parameters that are, that are required, and it will fail if it wasn't actually sent. Um, this is the same kind of idea, but this time I'm going to fire an event like control click. So using silver unit, I create a control. I set the template children on it, calling on apply template. And now I'm saying to silver unit, look, I want you to fire an event from control core. And I have an enum of what type of UI events I want to simulate, or I can give it a name using a string or give it a type. Uh, these are the arguments that will be sent to the event. Now notice that this time I can actually fake out mouse event args because silver unit has a function that's called make event args. It takes a generic type and it will actually create an instance for you. Because it's based on the type mock isolator framework, it can fake any type of object, even if it has an internal constructor or whatever. So I fire an event. And by the way, fire event is also an extension method on any control. So you can just say ctl.core.fire event if you wanted to. I just want to show you that there is this one single point of entry if you wanted to use it this way. And then I silver unit assert visual state was changed to pressed. And this is what my test looked like. There is no in queue. There is no browser. There is nothing. And I think this is how it should be. It should be simple. should be run just in memory and so on. Same idea here. If I really was to refactor this, I can refactor this into helper methods, like creating the custom control. Check visual state after must event from control. My test will look just as easy. They would be easy to write. I can even refactor it into any unit related test case attributes. So if some of you were at one of my, one of my previous talks, I showed that you can create the same test that takes arguments and just call it with different arguments every time using a special attribute in any unit called test case. So for each test case, the arguments that you see to the attributes are mapped to the parameters on the function. So text box uh, would be actually sent to this one. Okay? And the expected visual state 
would be sent here. So they're mapped to the parameters. That means that I have one, two, three, four, five test cases relating to the Silverlight control. And they all run very, very simply. They all take the parameters, and I'm checking in a more generic manner, if you will. I can v add multiple test cases that say, look, when, uh, when, uh, when the uh, text box control, let's look at the bottom one. When the text box control um, fires a got focus event, I want you to move to visual state focused with true for, for transitions. That's all it says. When the core control throw, uh, fires mouse leave, I want you to move to the normal event. Yes, use transitions. And so on and so on. So it becomes very easy, very simple to create really simple tests, but that actually check the logic inside our control. So if I was to go and I was to run this test, remember this doesn't run in the browser. It doesn't check that XAML was loaded and all that stuff. These are all the tests in this specific case. And I was to go to the control um, and say, um, let's see, custom control, and actually put a bug there. Let's say that I forgot to register to the events. Okay, I have two bugs here. Forgot to register to the mouse left button down or mouse uh, leave, let's say lost focus or uh, got focus as well. And I'm going to run the same tests again. So this is a real bug in my code, and I'm just running it in memory. And you can see that I actually get exceptions here from the tests. Now the nice thing about it, because it's in memory, I can actually do test first development for Silverlight controls. I can write the test first, then make the test pass, then do all the XAML related stuff and make them work. I don't need XAML to run these tests. That's the whole point. I can actually run these tests without any XAML whatsoever. And that's a very powerful feature. I don't need to wait until the whole control is full to start testing it. I can actually do it in a test-driven manner. That's what I wanted to support. So you can test specific logic. You can test any .NET related logic. It's just a simple unit test. Um, uh, there are some cons about this. Uh, the, uh, the biggest one is that you do require a license for type mock because if you're using it in a commercial context. If you're developing open source Silverlight controls, uh, TypeMock has an open source free license. But that's about it. Uh, you don't test XAML, you don't do integration testing, so you're not testing JavaScript related stuff and so on. It's still a work in progress. Uh, I think that uh, someone who knows more about Silverlight than me will find that it, there are some things that you cannot test with it that you should. That's why it's open source. You can add to it, and I'm happy. I'm keep I'm keep adding uh, new features to it uh, every week, so you can freely download it. Compared to MSL test, I think it's a vast dif uh, difference. It's much more usable. Um, I think uh, there is a reason we haven't heard that much about MSL test uh, up until today, even though it's been in existence for I think several months now. Let's see um, if there's anything else. Other frameworks. There are three other frameworks that you should know about. There's a framework called Sil Silvernium. It's based on the Selenium framework, which is basically a browser automation framework. It will run the browser in different process, different threads, and actually click stuff. But it's an integration test framework. Odin is a resharper uh, test runner for Silverlight. So it runs your tests. Uh, in under the Silverlight runtime. But they have to be Silverlight related tests. So you still have to load all that other stuff. It actually does load some sort of a browser related uh, thing there. Uh, if you're going to use uh, mock objects inside the logic of the Silverlight stuff, uh, mock and Rhino mocks have versions that are compiled into the Silverlight runtime because this is different DLLs of the runtime. So if you're using regular tests, you can definitely use those frameworks as well. Um, the silver unit one, it's not actually Silverlight related. That is, it's regular CLR. It just has references to Silverlight uh, assemblies. But it's a regular test framework uh, class library. So it's not actually written in Silverlight. It's not compiled into Silverlight. It just has different references. Um, 
with Slovenium, you just just think of it like a script. You open a URL, you go to spe to a special uh, place, and you can start testing various properties of the control, like height, width, and stuff like that. Uh, I've never actually used it. Some people swear by it. Um, some people just swear it. Uh, it really depends. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. But you can do some powerful stuff with it. That's at least that's what I heard. Um, maybe sometime I will have more time to start testing it. Because you have those two frameworks, um, I don't think there is an excuse not to start testing or to start playing with it. Um, I think uh, we will find that as more and more technologies come in, we'll find more and more ways to test them. It's just a matter of uh, time and technology. Um, if you want some uh, to get uh, the source code for everything you've seen, you can just download it from the CodePlex. It's all open source. Uh, the only thing you will need to download and install is uh, you can just get a trial version of uh, Isolator for 21 days and start playing with that. See what, what you think about it. Uh, it will not work if you don't have several, uh, TypeMock Isolator installed in Visual Studio. You can always contact me by email uh, if, uh, if you want to uh, check, uh, I don't know, if you have any questions about these kind of things. Um, okay, it's the last talk and I want to finish with a song. So what I need, did you already raise your hand before I asked? Then you're not selected, I'm just kidding. Uh, I need a volunteer. Hey, there you go. That was a big, big surprise. What's your name? Hmm? Kato? Okay, w warm welcome for Kato, guys. And girls. You know what to do? Are you sure? Okay. Um, I hope you've never heard this song before. I don't even remember why I, what songs I already did today. That's how weird today has been. Um, can you uh, press space for a second? Okay. Um, this is a song about writing software that never works on the client side. So as I finish the words, you just press space. Go. Our client likes to change his mind We're getting tired of his games And no matter what we have designed It all comes crashing down in flames When we're Knocking on the client store. We think we got it. The knock, knock, knocking on the client store. But it worked in my machine. Knock, knock, knocking on the client store. But he doesn't trust us anymore. We have a dev lead that believes. That we don't need to write no tests And we don't have automated builds and Our culture looks like one big mess But we are a knock knock knocking on the client store We think we got it on the client store It worked in my machine Knock, knock, knocking on the client store But he doesn't trust us anymore Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, you're going to get a book. You know that, right? Oh, cool. You didn't know that, right? <laughs> okay.